Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm Andrew, it's Aggie. Um, today we're gonna work on kind of a multi-directional half guard pass. Um, I'm gonna get into some ideas and concepts around the initial position that we need to find when you're going against better people. Um, there's a position that I learned as fundamental starting position, but it's so rare. My students are starting to call it super secret starting position. Um, so I think that's something that's important to really understand, especially when you're trying to get upper body controls. If you don't get lower body control first, the upper body control is useless. And I'll show that here in a second. But we're going to look at how from the half guard, we can find a knee cut position um, with upper body cross face underhook control. And then if they block your knee, they are automatically putting you into three quarter mount position. Um, so it's a multi-directional pass scenario, but there's some key factors that we really need to make sure we have um, under control so that we can have a really successful pressure style pass when we land the pass, we're gonna be in a really, really strong position. So first, let's talk about that super secret starting position. Where's, what's it? Where's Carmen Electra? Is that what that was? <laughs> <laughs> what was Kim that? Possible. Kim Possible, okay. Yeah, I'll turn that off really quick. Okay. All right, so half guard. All right, so a lot of times when we're in half guard, um, the, the people are seeking upper body control and chest to chest control. And that's not wrong. That's not wrong. But a lot of times people don't focus on what their legs are doing while they're getting into these positions. And again, if you're going against somebody good, they're going to understand how important this knee elbow space is between this elbow and this knee. If I can be in that space, I'm winning this half guard battle, right? So again, somebody educated, they're going to understand that. If I can beat this top knee, if I can beat this knee shield, or maybe they never had one, and I start going into, even if I get my cross face underhook, no, don't worry about it. Even if I get my cross face underhook and I put a ton of pressure, if I don't manage what's going on with this knee, she's going to be able to get a knee elbow escape. So she's going to put her elbow inside, bring her knee to her elbow, and now her knee is inside. And she can easily push me away with her knee, make a lot of space, and start developing frames and getting underhooks and things of that nature. And I can't tolerate a situation where this knee comes back into the fight. Once I pass the line of the knees, I can't allow it to go back in front of the knees, okay? The, the goal is to pass the feet, pass the knees, control the hips, chest to chest pressure, and work my passes. So when I get here into the half guard, and I've finally beaten the knee line, what I wanna do now is go to what I call fundamental starting position. Well, I don't call it, I learned it as fundamental starting position, but like I said, my students are starting to call it super secret starting position. What I want to do is tuck this knee into her hip. And now I create asymmetrical hips. I'm going to drop my right hip subtly, picking my left knee up off the mat, putting all my weight onto my right knee, and I'm pinching. So now if she tries to hip escape away, she's stuck. Her left hip is isolated to the mat now. Her left knee, this knee, is completely stuck past the line of my hips. So now let's say she has her frames in. She's got a, a frame on my shoulder, frame on my bicep. I can't cross face her. Well, she can't make space. And since I'm on top, I have the ability to start pummeling my hands. So I'll pummel inside, look to get a good cross face, work this arm up into an underhook, pull her in tight, get chest to chest. And now if she tries to do that knee elbow escape that she just did, she can't make the space. Her knee is now trapped, okay? This is where I'm gonna start the process of piking my hips up. Now, one of the rules when you pike your hips up is I need to keep my hip, my knees pinched. If I pike my hips up and my leg comes out wide, she brings her left knee in and she starts recovering guard, okay? So I need to make sure as I pike my hips up, my knees stay pinched. Look, she can't bring her knee back in. And now I can start to cut my knee across to go into my knee cut position. Once we're here, I like to make sure that my hip goes to the mat. <laughs> make sure my hip goes to the mat, I can kick out and start to finish my pass. When you get to this position, don't just go to your knees and try to hug because she's gonna knee elbow escape again, bring her left knee inside and start recovering. So once you get past the legs, walk their hips away from you. And now you can stabilize your pass. Look where her knees are pointed. That's what I want. Now she can't knee elbow escape as easily, okay? So that's some of the important factors of the beginning stages of this motion. Make sure you find fundamental starting position. When you hit your knee cut, make sure you turn their hips and knees away from you. And as you're piking your hips up, keep your knees pinched. Don't let them recover guard, okay? Now, what'll happen a lot of times, again, with somebody good, 
is she knows I want to cut my left knee across her left hip. But generally she has a free, especially no gi, it's hard to control this arm. In the gi you can. But no gi, she'll probably have a free left hand here. So a lot of people, when you get past their knee, you find fundamental starting position, you start to get upper body controls, you're playing here, and you start to pike up. As I go to cut my knee, she might block it with her left hand. Here. So I'm trying to cut my knee, I can't go this way. So I bring it the other way. I go to three-quarter mount. So once I get to three-quarter mount, and we're here, okay, now I need to free this ankle. And they're probably going to have my ankle pinched pretty tight here, okay? So what I want to do is the leg that's not being active right now involved in the fight. So I lean my weight forward so I can get my laces inside the knee, okay? So I put my shoelaces inside the knee. Make sure you're at the knee, not the hip. We want to work with the length of the lever here. So I go here to the knee, extend my legs, put my knees down, pommel my feet through, and I can lock in a really strong mount position, right? So I really like that pass in particular because um, in most tournaments, that's a seven point move, three for the pass, four for the mount. It's the highest scoring move you can do in points tournaments, but also it's pretty demoralizing, okay? If somebody is in your half guard and they end up in mount, not just side control, it's pretty demoralizing. Like that, they're probably quite a bit better than you or they did something really special in that moment. When it comes to this passing sequence, you can choose preferentially whichever one you want. You wanna to go to three quarter mount, you can go straight to three quarter mount. You wanna to go to knee cut, you can go to knee cut. But a lot of times I'll start with knee cut, people will block, I'll take it to three quarter mount because it's just a sequence of events that's easy to play out, all right? So again, Fundamental starting position, that's where we want to start our half guard battle. We want to beat the knee line and not let them recover the knee line. From there, we can pommel with the upper body, try to find chest to chest, cross face underhook, two underhooks, whatever you want, and start working your sequences. We pike the hips up. Once the hips come up and my knee line clears her legs, now I can cut to the knee cut or cut to the three quarter mount. It's really up to me initially, but also if they block the knee cut, we'll take three quarter mount. And from there, we look to stabilize our passes. If you knee cut, walk their hips away. If you mount, lock your position in, lock your hips in, and look to stabilize the position. This has uh, brought me a lot of success with my passing, especially against high-level guys, strong guys. Right? This is how I like to finish with good pressure. Okay? Uh, again, I'm Andrew. This is Aggie. We're here at Nexus Jiu-Jitsu in Folsom. Uh, just getting that working. So yeah, try it out. Let me know how it goes. Multi-directional passing. And uh, don't mess it up.